Open Bazaar has released their teaser trailer for their for their new decentralized market, totally open market, and it looks fantastic. I'm really excited about it. It really has the potential to, you know, take the concepts and functionality of eBay and Craigslist and, you know, implement it in just a computer program that allows anyone around the world to, you know, make contracts, make transactions, buy products online. Um, there's going to be escrow services, uh, dispute mediation services, and it's all, all going to be funded um, by, by, well, not, not funded, but like people will be able to choose different like mediators depending on their reputation. And, uh, you know, there's going to be like a voting system and, and um, it, lo it looks fantastic basically. And it's, it's really going to empower people when it, when it comes out. Yeah, I think I've been excited about Open Bazaar ever since it came out as Dark Market, you know. Um, just because of how well the first Silk Road worked. Um, you know, regardless regardless how of how you feel. How successful it was, yeah. Yeah, regardless of how you feel about, um, about drugs or whether or not they should be legal, y you know, you can't really deny that um, Silk Road was a great business model, it, you know. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Silk Road wasn't decentralized, of course, but um, it had a lot of the features that Open Bazaar is using, like uh, reputation tracking, um, trustless uh, arbitration for disputes, escrow services, uh, things like that, and it made um, it made the the drug trade. Uh, as far as Silk Road goes, made it really peaceful and as legitimate as an illegal business could be. Um, and they did it outside of any government regulation, obviously because it's illegal. So just imagine what a trading platform could do, because that's all Open Bazaar is. It's just it's just a platform. It's just a it's just a market uh, that people can go to to sell things. You know, it's not its own business or anything. It's just something anybody can use to set up their business, and it's designed specifically for um, trustless uh, interactions with other people, uh, and it's it's totally decentralized. It can't be taken down by anything, so literally any business, black market or white market, can thrive on it, and I think it's just yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they. I'm. I'm. I'm amazed at the the kind of features that they're that they're planning to to get in the works. Um, they call it Ricardian contracts. I'm still doing some research on on how all these things work, and I certainly don't understand how the programming uh, works to create these features. But you know, they you know they they could potentially have currency exchanges on Open Bazaar, um, basically filling the role of Bitstamp or MintPal or whatever. Um, they, they, they have this long list of like potential applications of, of contracts and it's just built right into the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's, that's exciting in its own right that, that, you know, that they're turning this open market into something so much more and, you know, uh, potentially so much more revolutionary. So, uh, the, the, the beta, the beta comes out at the end of August and then 1.0 is scheduled to be released in December. Right now it's an alpha phase. You can actually go on um, on the GitHub profile page and actually use an alpha version of Open Bazaar and kind of get to know the UI. You can actually suggest um, improvements to the UI to the developers. So, you know, they're being totally open about developing this and you can go on and read all the docu documentation about what they want to implement. It's really super exciting. So, how do you think it's going to turn out? Like, do you think there's going to be uh, really huge businesses that use it, or is it going to, you know, s stay in the uh, like the Etsy kind of atmosphere where people just sell like you know handmade goods, or is it just going to be used for drugs? What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a combination of those things. Um, you know, Silk Road was mostly used for drugs, although th there were uh, some legal uses for it, as well as a couple really extreme uses like, you know, gun sales and, and or assassination contracts and stuff. But um, Open Bazaar is being built 
as a platform, they're really trying to be open to any kind of economic transaction between people. Like even even um, trading shares might be implemented as a possible feature. Trading shares of, of companies in a decentralized way. So um, like it's it's hard to predict exactly what it'll be used for. I mean, obviously people will sell drugs on there. That's a given. Um, but they're they're building so much more on top of it so that it can be so much more. Uh, as for like big businesses getting on to open bazaar and like selling products, I don't think that's really going to happen a lot because big businesses already have their platforms that they already use to sell products and you know hold a, a customer following. So they don't have any really re reason to get on open bazaar, but it's mostly going to empower individuals like Etsy type people who like to make their own products and just sell it to anyone who will buy it out on the open market. You know, there's going to be categories you can place your thing in a, in a category and, uh, and totally uncensored. You can put literally like anything you want. You know, I could take my, my, you know, toenail clippings and sell them, <laughs> sell them on there. Like what if a celebrity wants to go on there and and what if Kim Kardashian wants to, you know, clip some toenail clippings and and put them on <laughs> Open Bazaar and sell them for like a thousand dollars or something? Someone would buy it, but yeah. you're not that. Like if if that was on eBay, if Kim Kardashian tried to do that on eBay, you know that post would probably get deleted by eBay because that's that would be against some kind of rule there. But you know, Open Bazaar totally open. You sell all the toenail clippings you want. You know, ch you know. Kim gets a gets a haircut or whatever. Sean Penn gets a haircut. I don't know. Obama wants to sell his his old pair of glasses on, on Open Bazaar. <laughs> like this is this is really going to empower individuals who just have an idea to sell something, and and put it online and make a transaction with someone across the world. Yeah, my first my first thoughts uh, about Open Bazaar was that you know you know. Oh, it'll never leave the Etsy stage. It'll always be little, you know, arts and crafts, handmade things uh, that people make. But the, you know, then I started thinking more about what it actually was, and I uh, like. There's really, there's really no rules. It's, it's just a place where people can go to sell things. It's a, a true, you know, it's a true marketplace. Um, it's just a digital version of it. Uh, you know, like you don't. There's no like stores or anything you have to go to. So. I don't see, you know, and like you said, I don't really think that um, any, you know, previously existing businesses, um, even if they already accept Bitcoin, I can't see them like moving their business over to Open Bazaar just because they've already spent so much money becoming compliant with financial regulations and things like that. They've, just got, really they've be, got their stuff going. For yeah, them. it wouldn't They're really be profitable up. for them to do so. But, um, but you know, small business a small Etsy type businesses could turn into big businesses because you know on on Etsy I've like I've never I've been on Etsy but I've never bought anything from them I've definitely never like sold set up a shop with them or anything um you know but I'm sure there's lots of you know rules that you have to follow when you're when you're on Etsy and I'm sure that they take a a, a cut of uh whatever uh, revenue you make as like you know a service fee or whatever I'm not sure about that but but probably yeah I mean we probably some research but probably. um and so I like a lot of people who start out on Etsy and they get really big well they don't stay on Etsy they go and make their own website right and you know it has to be because it's it's hard to operate a big business on Etsy just because you can only go so far with it yeah um but with and Open Etsy Bizarre, itself is a business so you're basically yeah. just in someone else's system yeah you're you're like a you're just basically like a subcontractor within, you know, like an umbrella company. But with Open Bazaar, it's not it's not a company, it's not anything. It's just a place where you can go to sell goods. Yeah. You know, no so profit people, motive for the creators at all. Yeah. They're just developers. Yeah. They're making this platform. So if people can go on Open Bazaar and, you know, they sell products that enough people want and they're at the right price, uh, then yeah, they'll get really big. And since Open Bazaar itself is decentralized you know, maybe the entire company could be decentralized. You know, countries nowadays, they have, 
they operate all over the world, but they always have a country of origin. They have a you know a base of operations, and that's where the majority of the financial laws apply is in the country of origin. You know, but that might not happen with Open Bazaar because you could have people from all over the world getting together to start a, a business with each other. And, you know, if they're all equal partners, then there is no country of origin. You know, so not and only it's not does, really necessary to define one at all. It's just people. Yeah, yeah, because you just go there, you just go there and, and sell stuff and then how the business uh divides up the the profit, it, you know, that's up to them. It doesn't you know, it doesn't matter what their business model is, whether they're it's one person or whether it's a lot of people who are in the same country or there's people from all over the world working together. Uh, it's it just doesn't matter, uh, and so what Open Bazaar is, uh, like just the nature of Open Bazaar, that alone would decentralize, would you know, kind of create a decentralized economy. But then once businesses get bigger, and then um, there's there's really no uh, you know centralized headquarters for the business that you know that makes the economy even more peer to peer, and it's going to make it even harder to break up if anybody yeah. ever tries to yeah that'll scare governments that's for sure no country of origin what what are <laughs> what are you how do how do we don't know we don't know how to define you so using a platform that that is just a program just some computer code how do we how do we take you down if we don't like what you're selling how's it gonna yeah, work like like just imagine you get one like one person from the u.s one person from argentina and another person from like Italy or something, and they get together and they they decide they're gonna sell this like online service, or they're gonna make like make a video game or some kind of product or something that they're gonna sell, and they're all going to be equal partners in the company. They're gonna like split up the profit evenly. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's no majority of the company in any country. So how how is anybody going to apply any regulations to that? It's going to be really hard to do so. Um, if they if the governments want to bad enough, they're going to have to, you know, do some pretty questionable things that you know break their own laws. So yeah, here's the solution to that: new world order, <laughs> one world government. It'll all their all the conspiracy theorists fears will come true when the governments decide that the only way that they can regulate these global uh, you know, decentralized businesses is by becoming a global centralized government. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a country of origin if there's only one country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, you know, oh, old, again, old continental countries are outdated. We need a one world government to, to track you this. You know, even, even if that does ever become a serious idea that governments have, like, pretty much nobody on earth supports that. Like there's there's a small group of like super socialists that are like yeah global government so we can have a global wealth tax but yeah kind of U- UN minded people right people who support yeah, the UN maybe making it most stronger. people but most people who are just like you know average people when they hear you know world government they're like what no that's tyranny so yeah, that you know, can that if, can go downhill pretty fast yeah so if open bazaar ever takes off and you have like pretty big businesses that compete with like uh, you know the old style of conducting business. Uh, it'd be pretty hard for anybody to take it down, really, yeah. just because of how decentralized it is. Yeah, I'm I'm super curious to find out how all this plays out, and we're gonna we're gonna find out over the next year or so. We're gonna see how governments uh, react to the concept of a decentralized online market that they can't go in and, you know, track one guy's phone calls and messages and, and find him in a library and arrest him and, and then steal his servers and steal his bitcoins. You can't. It's not It's not in one particular place for government thugs to go steal it. We've adapted p- beyond that. Yeah, but I don't know why. Maybe I'm just a pessimist, but I just have this really bad feeling that Open Bazaar is going to come out and... All it's going to be used for is you're going to have like one guy like selling cookies or something, and there's going to be a million drug dealers, and there's going to be some <laughs> shady porn. Like I'm just afraid that that's what's going but to happen. With what, it. what about Kim Kardashian's toenail clippings? Don't forget that. And she probably doesn't know what Bitcoin is. <laughs> 
Hey. She can sell that on. She can sell that on Reddit. There's a lot of really weird subreddits that that's, sell things like 